question for you. Have you ever stopped to consider how growing up with physically and verbally abusive parents, parents who have a very toxic relationship, single parent households, and maybe as a result of being in that single parent household, you've never had a mother figure, you've never had a father figure. Have you guys ever stopped to consider how growing up with the parents that you did has shaped who you are and how you do things today? And if not, why not? And if so, have you actually worked on fixing what your parents have broken in you? Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, then make sure that you click the subscribe button below and join the revolution. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about parents and how some of the things that our parents have done or continue to do even have spilled over into us and affected who we are today. Now I want to start off this video by saying I am not a psychiatrist, I'm not a psychologist and what does that mean? That means that when I'm bringing these things up this is not a professional opinion however that does not invalidate my opinion and as I bring these things up I want you to see if you can identify yourself in any of these situations and see how it has affected you and how you intend to change it. I'm not going to be the one to be giving solutions in this video but this is just to ignite a fire within yourself so that you can take the steps that you need to take in order to fix your life if it needs fixing personally I believe that there's no age in which one can say I've totally got everything figured out I know who I am I know where I'm going like I just I don't need to learn anything else this is it this is me I've arrived I'm the one I don't think we ever have that point and I think that's the same thing for our parents when they became parents it didn't take away from them being on their journey it didn't take away the ability to make mistakes it just added another component in to their lives it just means that now when they make mistakes in their lives it spills over into us I'm going to be talking about a few home slash parent living situations that some of us have found ourselves in and talking about some of the effects that these things have had on our lives with or without your knowledge so the first thing that I'm going to be talking about today is parents who do not apologize by B if you are an African child, chances are you grew up in a household where your parents never apologized to you even once. Instead, what they're going to do is mm, offer you extra meat, offer you food, uh, tell you to come and sit with them. Basically, anything and everything except actually verbally apologize to you. Have you ever stopped to think about why you have such a negative relationship with apologizing? Why you have to first swallow a truckload of pride and, and then climb up Mount Kilimanjaro and back in order for you to be prepared to apologize? Having parents who refuse to apologize to you as a child may cause you to have a negative relationship with apologizing. When you are growing up and you deserve the apology from your parents, from people who are higher than you, you never did get that apology that can also lead to people who do not apologize to people who they believe are beneath them what do I mean by that that can lead to an older sibling choosing never to apologize to their younger sibling because I'm older I'm the parent I'm the one with authority in this case and people with authority don't apologize that can lead to you being a leader a manager or even a CEO in a company and you never apologize to your employees or people who work for you or under you because you believe Believe that people with authority never apologize your parents never apologize to you I don't believe I have to stress the importance of an apology for most people it is important to have someone acknowledge the fact that they hurt you and while an apology won't fix anything have you ever heard kids say sorry doesn't help it doesn't help in a sense that it's not gonna change anything but it does help in a sense that someone is acknowledging that they hurt you I personally believe that this philosophy that parents don't apologize to their children and parents are never wrong is wrong on the parent side and I don't believe that it is something that we should be carrying on as people who are going to be parents in the future if you do want children the next point that I'm going to be talking about is verbally abusive parents if there's one thing that we can definitely be sure about it is that words carry power 
Proverbs 18 21 life and death is in the power of the tongue and those who love to talk will bear the fruits thereof did you grow up with parents who would always call you names always speak down on you growing up with parents who always tell you that you need to be more like this person that person that person basically you need to be everybody but yourself can lead to you having an identity crisis because you always want to be other people because your parents have taught you that being yourself is not good enough that you your best is not good enough so you always strive to emulate other people other personalities be everyone but yourself whoever the person was that says sticks and stones may break my bones but words will never hurt me is a liar words can build people up words can break people down who doesn't love words of affirmation who doesn't love being told you're doing a good job you're so beautiful you're so smart I love you I'm here for you I support you I believe in you who doesn't love you hearing those things. Motivation can come through hearing those things, hearing that you are good enough and it motivates you to do more. In the same way, when you are always being told that you're not good enough, nothing you ever do is good enough, you're useless, you're stupid, it actually leads to some people underperforming because they have believed the words of their parents. And if you grew up with parents who are always telling you that you're not good enough, you have to break out of that cage. You have to break those mental chains. You have to break free. Unfortunately, no one is going to do it for you. If you can't do it by yourself, speak to somebody. Go speak to a therapist if you can afford one because I know that it's also about affordability. If you can't afford a therapist, find a community, find someone, some way that you can speak to. And also understand that it's not going to be a quick fix. Years and years and years of verbal abuse is going to take years of trying to fix it. The next thing that I want to talk about is physically absent parents. How has it affected you to grow up not having a dad, not having a mom? Whether it is because they passed away or they left, how has that affected who you grew up to be? How has it affected you not having a male figure, a mother figure? Was there a man in your life who taught you how to be a man? Was there a woman in your life who taught you how to be a woman? Was there a man in your life as a woman who taught you what a man is? Was there a woman in your life as a man who taught you what a woman is? Are your views of relationships shifted because you grew up without a parent? How do some men do this thing where when they break up with the mother of their child, automatically they break up with the child too. How do men do this thing where they just have kids all over the place and purposely just refuse to be fathers to these kids? This is something that blows me. How do you pick? How do you pick? How do you live? How do you live with knowing that a little boy and a little girl is gonna grow up without a father? Not because you're dead, but because you just rejected them. Maybe you're that kid watching this video now. How has that made you feel? That your father is alive. Maybe you even know where he is. Maybe you even know his other kids. But he's chosen not to be your dad. When you look at yourself and how you view relationships, how you view yourself, how you view men and women and love, how has the absence of your parent affected that? And the last point that I want to talk about, and it is one that I'm actually most passionate about, is messed up mom and dad relationships. And I mean this in a romantic sense. You see, your parent's relationship, if there is one, is your first look into what a relationship is supposed to be like. And some of you grew up seeing that a man and woman relationship is abuse. Your dad hit your mom. Your mom hit your dad. Some of you grew, grew up seeing that a man and woman relationship is a man who cheats. Some of you grew up seeing that a man and woman relationship is a mom who always swears at the dad. A mom who always lets your dad know that she doesn't need him. I want you to take a moment now and look at how you view and do relationships and look for your parents' relationship in yours. What are things that your mother does that you've adopted 
What are things that your dad does that you've adopted? I'm sure most of us have heard the saying that when you are looking for a relationship, you look for your parents. And what do I mean by that? As a woman, you look for your father in men. As a man, you look for your mother in women. What happens when your mother is an abuser? What happens when your father is a cheater? What happens when either one or maybe even both your parents are toxic? There's this thing that some mothers say. They say that your dad may be a bad husband, but he's a good father. Personally, my personal opinion, I don't think it to be true. I don't believe that it is possible to be a bad husband and a good father. And what do I mean by that? When you are a bad husband, it spills over into your children. When you're hitting your wife, it spills over into your children. Your son grows up seeing you hit women, and so he becomes an abuser. Your daughter grows up seeing you cheating on her mother, and so cheating becomes normalized in her head, and she grows up looking for men who cheat, or thinking that it's okay for men to cheat. What toxic behavior have you learned from your parents that you have normalized in your brain and are trying to emulate? So I want to encourage you all to call your parents, the ones who tried their best, the ones who bent over backwards to be the best they can be, and thank them and show them love and appreciation. The parents watching this, because I know there are parents who watch my videos, the parents who are watching this, maybe you need to be the one to start the dialogue with your children. And if they're the ones to reach out to you, open yourself up to listen and to learn. I want you to call your parents, the ones that damaged you, the ones that hurt you, the ones that harmed you, and speak to them. If you're old enough, I don't know like how old the people are that watch my videos, but like, if you are someone who's old enough, I encourage you to start a dialogue with your parents. For those of you who will talk to your parents, I want you to understand that this is very touching. No one wants their child to come to them and be like, listen, you messed up and you messed me up and you're the reason why I have to go to therapy twice a week. If you do have this conversation with them, make sure that in the beginning, you know what the goal of the conversation is. Are you doing this because you want closure and healing? because you want to understand them better, maybe because you want to respect them as people or as parents, but make sure that you have a worthy goal. Don't, don't try to start these conversations because you want to shame people or you want to fight. Don't do this for any other reason except healing, growth, and love. I want to make it clear that this conversation, if you do decide to do it, might end very badly, might hurt your feelings very badly because not every parent is willing to listen. It'll hurt if that happens. But you see, sometimes you have to learn to forgive without receiving an apology. You have to try to see your parents as humans with their own errors. Forgive them. Forgive without that apology. Carrying that pain and hurt is only affecting you. Nobody else, maybe your relationship with them but you're the one who's carrying that. Alternatively, the conversation might go very well and your relationship with your parents will be transformed forever and everything's gonna be great. I wanna end off this video by emphasizing the fact that our parents are humans. Parents are on their own journeys and they make mistakes. So as I make this video, I'm not making this video to shame parents or to say parents are horrible because if we're gonna be honest, a lot of parents, not all parents, a lot of parents don't want to do their kids harm. They don't want to damage their kids. As messed up as your parents may have been, that was them doing their best. That was them having looked at their parents and said, Ooh, I don't like that. And so when it came to you, they strive to do better. Some of them overcame those demons. And so you grew up with the best version of a parent that you could get, even though that was still traumatic, but it was the best version that they could do. And so now you as the child, must look at your parents and their mistakes and become the best version that you can be in the healthiest sense that you can be. That's it for today, guys. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Please do add to the conversation down in the comments. And again, if there are any videos that you guys want me to do, comment down below and I'm gonna do my best to make it happen. That's horrible. But anyway, peace and love, guys.